All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Gunmala Kapoor. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a three-day visit to Russia this evening to attend the Eastern Economic Forum Summit. India and Russia to chalk out five-year roadmap to enhance cooperation in exploration of oil and gas. Lander Vikram of Chandrayaan-2 to undergo first deorbit maneuver this morning to bring it closer to the moon's surface. Haryana government announces about 5,000 crore rupee interest and penalty waiver on crop loans. India beat the West Indies by 257 runs in the second cricket test at Kingston, clincher series 2-0. And in ISSF World Cup Shooting Championship, India finish at top with five gold. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will leave for Vladivostok in Russia this evening to take part in the 5th Eastern Economic Forum, EEF Summit. The Prime Minister will also attend the 20th Annual Summit between Russia and India during the three-day visit. Briefing newspersons in Delhi last evening, Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale said that strengthening bilateral relationship in the field of oil and gas exploration will be high on the agenda during the visit. A five-year roadmap laying out what possibilities we have in cooperating in oil and gas, both in terms of exploration and exploitation and in terms of purchase in the five-year time frame 2019 to 2024 as we seek to diversify our oil and gas supplies beyond complete dependency in the Gulf. The Foreign Secretary said both India and Russia want to move beyond the conventional cooperation in defense and nuclear civil cooperation to new areas of the economy. The Foreign Secretary said India attaches a great deal of importance to the Eastern Economic Summit as the government wants to focus on having a business engagement with Russia and other Far Eastern countries. More from our correspondent. The 5th Eastern Economic Forum Summit sets the tone for India to focus on Russia Far East region for economic benefits. India, which has not concentrated on this region so far in the last 5-6 decades, wants to develop business links with the northeast of Asia via Russia Far East. In this regard, the government wants to explore an alternative sea route to Europe by developing shipping links between Chennai and Vladivostok. In addition, the government is also exploring the opportunities for sending skilled manpower to Russia Far East for diamond processing and farming. Some concrete measures in this regard are expected to come out and Prime Minister holds bilateral talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Vladivostok. Supra Shanti for AER News, Delhi. Answering media queries, Mr. Gokhale said India has full support from Russia on the issues of Jammu and Kashmir and cross-border terrorism. The Russian Federation has clearly stated they stand fully behind India on this whole issue. And that issue is Jammu and Kashmir, whether it is Article 370, whether it is cross-border terrorism. And this has been reiterated when External Affairs Minister recently visited that the Russian side is fully behind us on this matter. On the sidelines of the Eastern Economic Summit, the Prime Minister is expected to hold bilateral talks with the government heads of Japan, Malaysia and Mongolia. As a prelude to the landing of Chandrayaan-2 on the lunar south pole, its lander Vikram would undergo its first deorbit maneuver this morning. The National Space Agency, the Indian Space Research Organization, said the operation will be held between 8.45 a.m. and 9.45 a.m. One more deorbit maneuver will be held tomorrow to bring the lander closer than ever to the surface of the moon. The lander Vikram was successfully separated yesterday from the orbiter of Chandrayaan-2, which in effect is the mother craft. It would pave the way for its soft landing near the lunar south pole on Saturday. More from our correspondent. Chandrayaan-2 has traveled more than 3.5 lakh kilometers since its launch on July 22. In just a little over four more days, India's ambitious second lunar expedition is set to culminate in reaching its destination with a general touchdown. ISRO has said in the early morning on the 7th of this month, it would initiate a powered descent of the lander Vikram for about 15 minutes, which the scientists say is the most crucial part of the journey. The ISRO scientists have expressed confidence about the success of the high-stake mission by way of realizing the dream of operating a rover on the lunar soil. Jay Singh, AR News, Chennai. 
In Jammu and Kashmir, life is returning to normal in the Kashmir Valley with 90% police station areas without any daytime restrictions. Communication facilities have been augmented in several areas with transport plying normally in Srinagar and elsewhere in the valley. Government spokesman Rohit Kansal said this while addressing a press conference in Srinagar yesterday. Out of 111 police stations in the valley, only 105 of which are territorial or functional in that sense, daytime restrictions have been fully lifted from 92 police stations, up from 81 last week. This makes 90% of the valley free of daytime restrictions of any kind. Mr. Kansal said, out of 95 telephone exchanges, 76 are working at present. He said Jammu and Ladakh have full mobile phone connectivity. All essential supplies are reaching the valley and medical facilities are available at healthcare centers and hospitals. Eight United States-made Apache AH-64E attack helicopters will be inducted into the Indian Air Force today. The addition of the Apache fleet will significantly enhance the IAF's combat capabilities. Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal B.S. Dhanoa, will be chief guest during the induction ceremony, which will take place at the Pathan Court Air Force Station. The AH-64E Apache is one of the world's most advanced multi-role combat helicopters. The IAF had signed a multi-billion dollar contract with the U.S. government and Boeing Limited in September 2015 for purchase of 22 Apache helicopters. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The BJP-led Haryana government has announced a 4,750 crore rupee waiver on interest and penalty on crop loans. This will benefit around 10 lakh farmers of the state. Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar said this while addressing a rally in Bivani in Haryana yesterday. According to the announcement, the farmers whose bank accounts were declared non-performing assets or NPAs by these banks and were unable to renew their loans will now be able to do so. The Chief Minister said around 85,000 farmers had taken loans worth 3,000 crore rupees from the district cooperative central banks. He said farmers will have to pay 2% interest for loans less than 5 lakh rupees, 5% for loans between 5 lakh to 10 lakh rupees and 10% for bigger loans. In Assam, 200 new foreigners' tribunals are being made functional so that those left out of the final NRC list can file appeals against their exclusion. There are 100 such tribunals already in existence in the state. In a series of tweets, the Home Ministry spokesperson said, adequate judicial process is available for affected persons to appeal to foreigners' tribunals within 120 days from the 31st of last month. The spokesperson also clarified that persons left out of the NRC final list will not be detained under any circumstances till they exhaust all remedies available under law. Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Prakash Javrikar, has said that India has 24% of the world's forest cover and that this has increased over the last five years. Speaking at the plenary session of the 14th Conference of Parties, COP14, of the UN Convention to Combat Desertification at Greater Noida, Uttar Pradesh, yesterday, the minister said India will achieve sustainable land management and land restoration by 2030. We reaffirm our commitment towards protecting the land resources. India will achieve sustainable land management and land restoration by 2030 as committed. I am proud to share that India has exceeded the IQ targets under the Convention on CBD. Also, India's tree and forest cover has shown a good increase in the last five years. As part of the countrywide Fit India movement launched on the 29th of August, Tripura has joined the rest of the country, undertaking many programs for awareness of physical and mental fitness of the people. All India Radio correspondent reports that. State Youth Affairs and the Sports Department have started carrying out many events in all districts and subdivisional towns. Veteran sportsman and state football coach Bimal Kumar Roy Chaudhuri observed that. I hope that Fit India program will play all around development of the people.
Chief Minister Biblap Kumar Dev said, doing physical exercises as a habit is the only way out to become physically fit and help escape from bad habits and lifestyle diseases. Rina Nomaitim, AIR News, Agartala. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will receive an award from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan during his visit to the United States later this month. Minister of State in the PMO, Jitendra Singh, has said that the diligent and innovative initiatives of the Prime Minister were bringing laurels from across the world. Two people died and three others were injured when a four-story building collapsed in Silampur area of Delhi. According to fire officials, the incident took place last night. The injured have been admitted to the Jag Pravesh Chandra Hospital for treatment. China has lodged a complaint against the United States with the World Trade Organization, the WTO, a day after new tariffs imposed by Washington on billions of dollars worth of Chinese goods came into force. In a statement, Chinese Commerce Ministry said, in accordance with relevant WTO rules, China will firmly safeguard its legitimate rights and interests. It has lodged a complaint with the WTO body for dispute settlement. Eight people died and more than two dozen went missing after a scuba diving boat caught fire and sank off the California coast. Coast Guard officials said the boat erupted in flames near the Santa Cruz Island, just west of Santa Barbara in South California. The officials further said the blaze and intense heat prevented them from breaching the vessel's hull to search for survivors before the craft sank. India beat the West Indies by a thumping margin of 257 runs to win the second cricket test and clinch the series 2-0. Chasing a mammoth victory target of 468 runs set by India, West Indies were all out for 210 in their second innings on the penultimate day of the test at Kingston, Jamaica last night. India produced a top-notch bowling performance to demolish the West Indies as a series victory put them on top of the ICC World Test Championship points table. For India, Ravindra Jadeja and Mohammad Shami claimed three wickets each. The victory was the 28th in tests for Virat Kohli, making him the most successful Indian captain in the traditional format of the sport. India finished at the top of the IFSF World Cup Rifle Pistol Championship in Rio de Janeiro with five gold, two silver and two bronze medals. The Indian pair of Manu Bhakar and Saurabh Chaudhary of India defeated their compatriot rivals Yashaswini Deswai and Abhishek Varma in the summit clash of the 10-meter air pistol mixed team event. India has now finished as a leading nation in ISSF Senior World Cup events in 2019 with 16 gold, 4 silver and 2 bronze medals. Earlier, world number one in the women's 10-meter air rifle shooting, Apurvi Chandela, partnered with Deepak Kumar to win India their fourth gold medal yesterday. And now, for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Sunil Varma. Thank you, Gunmala. Most papers report of Chandrayaan 2's successful maneuver as it moves a step closer to the moon. The Tribune reports that landing module, Vikram, was successfully separated from the orbiter on Monday, five days ahead of the planned touchdown on the unexplored lunar south pole. The Pioneer reports that after Pakistan granted consular access to Kulbhushan Jadav, India's Shah Dafer met him and said that Jadav promoted a false Pakistani narrative and seemed to be under extreme pressure. Hindustan Times informs us of the catastrophic Hurricane Dorian, the most powerful storm ever to hit land in the Atlantic. Dorian has inflicted colossal damage on the Bahamas and is expected to move closer to the U.S. coast where millions have been evacuated. And finally, the Times of India informs us that China's lunar rover has discovered a strange gel-like substance on the far side of the moon. It is described as having fascinating colors and mysterious luster and was found at the bottom of a small crater on the moon. And with that, it's back to you, Gunmala. Thank you, Sunil. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a three-day visit to Russia this evening to attend the Eastern Economic Forum Summit. India and Russia to chalk out five-year roadmap to enhance cooperation in exploration of oil and gas. Lander Vikram of Chandrayaan-2 to undergo first de-orbit maneuver this morning to bring it closer to the moon's surface. Haryana government announces about 5,000 crore rupee interest in penalty waiver on crop loads. And in ISS 
World Cup Shooting Championship. India finished at top with five gold. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.